Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to have a look at loop impedances, and more specifically the maximum values of, and you've probably seen things like this chart here with uh, various values on for the different types of circuit breakers and the different ratings. Now the question is where do these things actually come from? Is it some kind of magic thing and someone spent a huge amount of effort trying to uh, work all these out for you? Well of course the answer is no. It is in fact relatively straightforward. So we're going to have a look at uh, some of the ones on this chart and uh, some of the ones in the blue book as well and just see where these things come from so that if you don't have a handy chart like this or the device you've got isn't actually on there then you can of course uh, work these things out for yourself. Now in terms of uh, loop impedance, what we're talking about is uh, essentially what we've got in this table here from the uh, 7671. So we've got maximum earth fault loop impedance, also known as ZS, for circuit breakers in this case uh, for uh, various ratings and types there. And we can see the value here is uh, represented in ohms there for the various ratings, type B, C, D, and uh, there's various other tables for fuses and all kinds of other stuff as well, but the principle is pretty much the same. Now the reason that these are important is that these are effectively the maximum values that uh, you want to have on any particular circuit, and this is to ensure that if a fault occurs, which is going to be a short circuit between line and the protective conductor or the earth, then this uh, resistance or this impedance here will determine how much current flows, and you want that current to be enough so that the protective device or the circuit breaker in this case will disconnect within the time that you want, and in this case it's say 0.4 seconds uh, disconnection time. In reality if you've got these it's going to be near instantaneously but uh, that's uh, just the uh, maximum time that's given there. So these are the maximum values so that uh, if this was higher then the current that would flow would be lower and of course if it's too low then the device won't actually disconnect in time and of course if the value you have is actually lower than this that's fine because it just means the current will be higher and the disconnection time will certainly be uh, probably a bit quicker in either case. Now this says in uh, BS7671 and there's various other tables and things as well for different devices. What you can also get are things like this where it's basically a uh, printed chart and again it's a similar kind of thing. You've got your ratings down the side here in amps, various different types of devices here so fuses and circuit breakers of various types and styles and again you've got the various disconnection times along the top here and uh, similarly over this side. Now all of these are written in here for you and there's obviously quite a lot of not applicables because some things aren't simply available in those values and you can get these from various places. This one uh, happens to be from there but uh, various places issue these. They're all pretty much the same. So the question is then how are these values actually determined? And then the other question is why are the values in here different to the values in the book we saw previously? Because if we just have a look at one example, let's take a 32 amp circuit breaker and it's going to be a type B which is probably the most common type there. So type B and it's a 32 amp circuit breaker and we can see the value here is 1.37 ohms. But if we look on this chart and we have a look at type B circuit breakers and 32 amps which is down here then the value we're given is 1.10. So obviously there's some difference between 1.10 and 1.37 so we'll see how that works as well. Now let's have a look at an, uh, an example of how this is actually calculated. So if we go for that one we just had a look at there, which was the Type B circuit breaker. So uh, let's say Type B, and it was going to be a 32 amp device. Now the value on that printed card there is 1.10 ohms. So uh, somehow we need to use this information to end up with that. Now. This is relatively straightforward. So first of all, a type B circuit breaker, to trip a type B pretty much instantaneously, it's going to need five times the rated current. And if this was a different type, it would be a different value. So a type C would be 10 times and a type D would be up to 20 times, but type B in this case, and uh, say a 32 amp device. Now the first thing to realise is that 5 times 32 is essentially the current we need to trip this device within the required time. Obviously if it was less than that it might trip, but on the other hand it might not. So 5 times 32 is 160 amps. So we're looking for something which will cause at least 160 amps to flow in the circuit, and this is where we've got a fault between line and the protective conductor or the earth. 
Now in the UK the supply voltage is 230 volts. Now, of course in reality it may be a bit more than this, or in some cases less, but this is the sort of nominal voltage, and that's what's used for calculations like this. Now to determine the uh, resistance or the impedance, it's going to be one of these divided by the other. So 230 divided by 160 amps gives us a uh, impedance of 1.4375 and that would be in uh, ohms there. So all we're doing here is just voltage divided by the current gives us a resistance or an impedance in this case. Now this isn't the end of it because of course 1.4375 is not 1.10 so there's obviously some other bits here which we're missing. The next thing we're missing is a correction factor and it's all because of this 230 volts. And as I said there, it's not normally going to be 230 volts in reality. It could actually be less than that. And of course, in some cases, it can be actually more. Now, if this is more, say it was 250 volts, that's not actually a problem because it actually makes this value higher than we've got here. So that doesn't really matter because, again, we're looking for the minimum value we're looking for. So 230 volts or higher is not a problem. However, the standard does allow that that can be quite a bit lower than this. So in order to account for situations where the voltage could be lower, and of course that might be when it's installed or it could occur at some later time due to extra loads on the system or whatever, then there's a correction applied. And this correction factor is called C min. All a correction factor is is simply a number which we're going to multiply things by to change it to a different value. In this case, C min is 0.95 or 95% if you want to think about it in that term. So in order to apply this correction, which is just there to allow for the fact that the 230 volts could be lower, all we need to do is just multiply that by the result we got. So 0.95 multiplied by the 1.4375, and that will give us a new value, which again will be in ohms as well. And the value we get from that is 1.36. There are some additional places there, it's actually 1.365625, but uh, we don't really care about uh, all of those things there. So this here is really our sort of result from the calculations. So all we're doing is type B gives us five times. It, we know it's a 32 amp device, so 160 amps is the current we need, five times 32. Resistance or impedance for that is voltage divided by the current, so 230 volts divided by 160 gives us 1.4375. And then we're going to apply this correction factor here of C min, which is just basically to allow for the fact that the voltage could be less than 230 volts in some cases. And we get 1.365625. Now, if we have a look at that table 41.3, we can see on the uh, second line there that the value it's got in there is 1.37. And that's basically what we've got here, because all that is is we're just rounding up to the two decimal places. So as it's a 5 there, then that rounds up to a 7. If that was 4 or less, it would be 1.36. So that's where the 1.37 comes from, as we've seen in the table before. So it is just a question of uh, what current you need, and therefore the voltage and the correction factor, and that gives you the value of loop impedance that you'll be looking for. And again, this is the maximum value, because of course if this value is lower, which would mean this is going to be lower, then it means that either the voltage is higher, which is not a problem, or it means that the current you're getting is actually considerably more than this. So again, either way, it uh, doesn't actually matter. This is just the maximum value which is permitted. Now, of course, there is another part to this because 1.37 is not 1.10, fairly obviously. However, 1.37 is what's in BS7671. 1.10 is what's on that printed sheet. And the difference here is 80%. Because what's actually happened is that the 1.37 is being multiplied by 80% or 0.8 effectively. And if we use the full uh, value there with all the decimal places in, that actually gives us a value of 1.0925. If we just use 1.37 times 0.8, so basically rounding off uh, at that point already, then the value we get is actually 1.096. So if you're going to round this off to a sensible number of digits, which is basically two decimal places, it's either going to be 1.09, or in the case of this one, if you've rounded it and rounded it again, you get 1.10.
This is why on some sheets from different places you may see a very small variation in the actual figures because it all depends on where they've rounded it off and uh, whether they've used the whole figure in that one or rounded it first and done it there. But in the real world, 0.01 ohms is not really going to make any difference to anybody. Now the reason for this 80% uh, factor being applied, this is also called a rule of thumb in some uh, ancient documents and uh, some people might still use that, this is to account for the temperature of the conductors because all of this here assumes that the copper conductors are going to be at sort of room temperature or 20 degrees Celsius or whatever. But of course if you've got a circuit that's heavily loaded, say this was say a uh, car charging point or something, it had been turned on for six hours at the full power, those conductors are going to be pretty hot and therefore when you heat up a conductor, say made of copper or whatever, the resistance of that increases. So this 80% here, there's no particular magic about it, it's just a uh, sort of best guess estimate to account for the fact that the conductors may well be hotter within the installation and therefore the resistance could actually be different from what you're measuring because if you're doing a loop impedance test on an actual circuit it's highly likely that the conductor is going to be at or near room temperature, sort of 20-25 degrees or something. It's not likely you're going to be able to test them when the conductors are at their maximum operating temperature, say of 70 degrees centigrade. So uh, the 80% value is used to allow for that. And the other thing as well is that if you went to an installation and you found that the uh, say maximum value allowed was 1.37 and you measured it and it came out as 1.36, that's not really the best kind of circumstance to be in because yes it technically does comply, but again some minor change or alteration could easily make it uh, go over. So again 80% there just to make sure that actual values are going to be well within and obviously for the uh, temperature differences if the circuit is loaded up to the maximum. Now of course in real life you can just look up on a chart like this, it's not actually a problem, but the value of knowing how this is calculated comes in where you've got a device which either isn't on this particular kind of chart or the actual values of it are not in the sort of normal range. So for example if you've got a type D circuit breaker, those are generally accepted to trip within around 20 times the rated current. However, if you use that you may well find that the circuit doesn't comply because you need ridiculously low values of uh, ZS here particularly on the higher rating ones, which may not be possible. However, if you contact the manufacturers of a particular device or a particular brand or make or whatever, then you can get the technical details from them, and you may find that rather than tripping at, say, 20 times, their particular one might only trip at, say, 15. And that will make a huge difference to the maximum impedance value that you're looking for. So although you can use the sort of 5, 10 and 20 times for standard circuit breakers, it is useful to sometimes to actually get the proper details from the manufacturer because certainly with the higher rated ones, say, say the C and D there, they may not actually trip at the 10 or 20 because bearing in mind that type C for example isn't necessarily times 10, it just trips somewhere between 5 and 10 times and the type D is somewhere between 10 and 20 times. So depending on who made it and what specification it is, it could say be 20 or it could be 15 or 13 or whatever else. And so that's going to make quite a large difference. Same thing applies for fuses. Again, it's just a question of looking up the appropriate uh, manufacturer's information for those. And again, you can use the standard values as given, but uh, again, in some cases it may be useful to get the actual details from the manufacturer rather than just using the generic ones. Now I'll just do another one of these calculations quickly here just to uh, demonstrate that. This time let's say it was a type C, and this time say it was a 10 amp circuit breaker. So type C, 10 amps, it should be a value of 1.75. So uh, 1.75 is what it's supposed to be. So a type C, and it was a 10 amp. Now type C is trip between 5 and 10 times, so we're going to assume it's going to be the 10 times. And the current there was 10 amps. So the current we're going to need is going to be 100 amps, which is basically 10 times. 10, fairly obvious there. And again the voltage in the UK is of course 230 volts, so uh, 230 volts divided by 100 amps, that will give us a value of 2.3 ohms. Again as we had before there is that uh, correction factor we need to apply, so then it will be 2.3 multiplied by 0.95, so remember that was that C min, Accommodates for the possibility the voltage could be lower than 230. And if we just calculate that one out, we get 2.185. 
And if I have a look in that table 41.3 in the BS7671, then that's basically the value we get there. They've actually got it in there as uh, 2.19. Let's get again, just rounding up the nearest two digits there. So uh, that seems to be where we want to go. And then to get the actual value we do normally use for an actual installation, again, that's that 80% uh, value, so multiplying by 0.8 or 80% basically. And if we use the full value here, the 2.185, then the value we get is 1.748. And again, we're going to just round it off to the two decimal places. Eight is obviously a fairly high number there, so we end up with 1.75, which again is what's printed on the sheet there. If you actually use the rounded off value of the 2.19 and multiply that by 0.8, then you actually get 1.752 which again is still 1.75. So in that particular case, you actually get the same value regardless of where you round it off. But as I said before, it doesn't really matter. 0 0.01 ohms is not really going to change anything in any practical terms. So that's how the maximum loop impedance values are calculated. And it is just a question of finding out the current required, which depends on the device you've got. Voltage, of course, divided by that gives you the result. Remembering that correction factor for the C min for the possibility of a lowered voltage. And then for real-world values, it's multiplied by 80% or multiplied by 0.8 to give you the uh, result you'll be looking for in the real world. And important to realise that what's in the wiring regulations here are the 100% values or the sort of basic ones, but uh, what you would normally use are the 80% ones in the real world, so to account things like the increase in temperature of the conductors when they're actually in use. And in terms of other devices, things like fuses or whatever, the principle is exactly the same. And all you need to get then again is the current required to cause that fuse to disconnect within the time that you want. Again, it could be 0.4 seconds or in some cases 5 seconds and in other cases there could be other times. And in terms of where you get that information from, well, it's actually in the regulations itself. There's one for fuses in the back there. It's all those graphs with the selection of values in the table on the side there. And if it's not in there, of course, you can get similar stuff from manufacturers of fuses and other devices. And in many cases, it's a good idea to use that rather than just the generic stuff, because in say, many cases that can give you a considerably different result. Using the sort of maximum values in there, certainly for circuit breaks and things, it is perfectly valid. But say, particularly with, say, type Ds and things, if you're using the times 20 value, that can give you next to impossible figures to achieve. And of course, in reality, if it's going to trip at, say, times 15, that's obviously a considerable difference, and that could uh, be the difference between a circuit being compliant and not. So uh, that's it for this video. Until next time, thanks for watching.